Hi guys, so I'm going to explain to you how to make a cartoon out of your pictures. I'm going to use the website Vector. I'm not using Adobe Draw. Vector is a lot faster in my opinion. I'm going to show you how to draw. Even if you can't hand draw things, you can still do this using your mouse. It's really easy and let's go. So first you make a new file. Oh, by the way, this is completely free. You don't have to install anything. It's on the website. Um, and then you go to upload image, choose your image. And stretch it out as much as you want. Stretch it out. And then you start working on it. If you see the pen tool, this is what we're going to be using for tracing our picture. And I'm going to explain to you how to do it. Basically, it's really easy. All you got to do is start somewhere. And I'm going to suggest starting with your face. So just click and drag. Click and drag to make the curve. Click and drag. And that's it. You're drawing with a mouse. Yay! It's a lot more easier than Adobe Draw, isn't it? Especially if you can't hand draw things like me. Can't hand draw. And there we go. The face is done. Now, what you gotta do is this is the layer for the face. So I'll change the name to Face Face Layer. And then um, I'm going to remove the border. I do not like the border. I think it looks um, tacky. I, I like flat, specific colors. So then I'm going to go to background. If I click on this, as you can see, it fills up. We don't want that. So while we choose a color, we want to disable this layer by clicking on this eye right here. It's still going to be there. The layer is not gone. But we have to use the eyedropper tool to choose skin tone for your character i suggest like nothing too dark nothing too light just kind of choose over here and then enable it back it looks like that really nice huh and you're done this is done now we have to work on every little item kind of like putting piece of paper on top of each other does that make sense i'm going to explain more next i'm going to work on the lips same principle basically trace the lips Obviously, I'm not putting that much effort, but when you do it, make sure to really like pay attention. Make sure you really make as detailed as possible. I'm just like rushing for the sake of um, explanation. So we have the lips done. I'm going to change the name to lips base layer. And then I'm going to remove the border. I'm going to disable it, and I'm going to add the color. I'm going to enable it back and it's like that. And we have two layers already. We have face and lip done. Good job. Yay. Next, I'm going to work on one eyebrow. I'm not going to do both because there's not that much time in this life. So I'm going to do this eyebrow. By the way, the completed version that I have done myself, where I actually put effort, is in the description. So make sure you check that out. So you can see the full picture. This is just like for demonstration purposes. And then when the eyebrow is done, change the name. Eyebrow, make sure you actually change the name of your layers. Otherwise, you'll get really confused. You can even make a more specific eyebrow left. And then remove the border. Enable it. Go here and then color. Enable back. This is how it looks. Still good for a rushed, for a rushed eyebrow. And then I'm going to work on the eye. And the eye is interesting because you you don't really trace like the eyeliner and then trace the white part. No, no. I'm going to explain to you how to do it. And again, think of it as putting pieces of paper on top of each other. I'm going to start with the bottom piece of paper, which in this case is the eyeliner. But I'm going to trace the whole eye as such. Tracing everything. Trying to grasp everything. And if you double click on it, you can actually play with the anchor points. You can make them as smooth, as round as, as you want. If you play with those handles right here. And yeah, I'm going to fix mine. And it looks like that. I'm going to change the name to eyeliner left eye. And yeah, then again, remove the border, disable it, go to background, change the color to black. It looks like that.
Now let me explain to you how to add the white part. If you haven't guessed already, the white part goes on top of the of the black part. Again, it's putting pieces of paper on top of each other. And this is the white part. So I white left. And I'm gonna remove the border. I'm gonna make I'm gonna disable this layer. I'm gonna change the color to white. And you have it, there you have it. It looks really good. So yeah, if you there it is. And now let's work on the iris. The iris is on top of the white and the eyeliner. It looks like that. Let's call this iris left. Um let's remove the border, let's change the color. And yeah, this is how it's going to look. Again, um, make sure to like zoom in and really pay attention to where your anchor points are. You don't want this to look slow, not like me. And here's a really cool thing. If you, if you go, if you enable all of your layers that you have so far and you go to pages, you can see how your overall project looks so far. And you can, you can see from a distance, it looks really good. It looks really cartoony. Um, keep in mind that when people look at your picture, they're not going to look at every small detail the way you do, so they're going to see this. If this looks good, you're fine. You should be happy. <laughs> so again, let's disable the face base layer. I'm going to, and I'm going to work on the nose. And again, I'm going to do only one part of the nose. You can do um, the whole thing. So I, I don't want the nose to be too dark, so I'm going to trace the whole part, including this light brownish part. And... Oh, God damn it. <laughs> so I'm going to trace this whole part as I said. Make sure it's all accurate, let's say, as I fumble around. Um, let's drag this, make it more roundish. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this layer nose left. And I'm going to remove the border, disable the color, and I'm going to go to the background and I'm going to choose this light brownish color and I'm going to enable it back it looks like this okay so now to add the shadow and basically this is the principle of how to add highlights and shadows you're practically adding them on top of your base layer you just like trace all of the shadow part make sure to smooth it out by double clicking and then playing with the anchor points all right and then I'm going to name this nose shadow left and then i'm going to remove the border disable it go to background and let's choose this dark brown color and this is how your nose looks really nice huh let's change those yeah. from the distance it looks like that it looks really good from the distance i'm not going to the other part but you got the gist of it um now let's go back to working on the lips. I really do enjoy working on the lips because you can add a bunch of shadows and highlights. Um, let's add this shadow in the, in the middle here. So there we go. I'm going to call this layer lips shadow. And I'm going to remove the border, disable it, go to background. And yeah, there it is. Trying to make it as quick as possible because I know tutorials are really slow paced and trying to make it as fast as possible. Um, now I like to put the I like to draw out the corners. I think the corners are really cute. Um, kind of like an arrow shape. I'm gonna call this lip corner left. And I'm gonna move the border. I'm gonna disable it. And I think the color is done already. I just have to. Yeah, here it is. Enable all of it. It looks like that. Again, adjust it as you may see fit. I don't have time for that, but you can adjust it. This is how it looks from a distance. Now let's add some highlights. I also love adding highlights. Basically, try to trace where you can kind of see there's a bunch of like, little light. Like white on top of the lips is very, very subtle, but if you can catch it, or if you can't catch it, just, you know, improvise. <laughs> I kind of improvised here. I'm going to call this lips highlight top. And I'm 
I'm gonna move the border, disable the background, and try to match the color. Like you can see, there's a bunch of like lights. So let's enable it back, enable the whole base layer, and this is how it looks. Again, let's look from distance. Yep. You can also look from a distance by zooming out on your overall picture. And this is how it looks. I really like how when you zoom it out, it looks like kind of like more realistic than if you, when you zoom it in, you can see every little error. All right, after you do that, we need to work on the hair. Again, I'm going to kind of rush through the hair, but you should definitely take your time. Try to trace the hair as such without actually tracing the dark parts here. Only trace what you think is on, on the front, and I'll explain to you why in a second here. So I'm going to be real lazy, as I said, I'm just trying to trace the best of my abilities. And yeah, just take your time, don't be lazy. <laughs> so hair, base layer, and of course paper, because you're going to have shadows, in, of course, in the hair. Um, on the hair, I suggest adding as many highlights and shadows. The more you add, and it's not just the hair, just any layer, the more you add, the better it's going to look, it's going to look more realistic, but at the same time, people know it's cartoon, so you can show that it's really put effort, like me. <laughs> um, again, color, it's white, that's how the hair looks, let's add the shadow here, and I'm not going to look at it because it's quite that much time, but you can definitely disable the hair and then just trace it from the source picture. Now I'm just going to improvise. I think the shadow from here looks all right. So I'm gonna call this hair shadow. I can't spell. It's okay. And I'm gonna disable this. And this this portion of this that this is too dark. So to that isn't. So see what color this is again. I suggest removing this. Just removing the hair base layer and just kind of you have to work your way through it because I'm kind of rushing here. But basically, every shade should be its own layer if that makes sense. And you build on top of it, like the lightest shade is on the bottom, and the darkest shade is on top of the lightest, and it builds up like that. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Like, I can make another shadow on top of this and make it even darker if that makes sense. And yeah. And rushed, but there it is. Now, the reason I didn't, don't want you to trace this is because this actually goes behind the neck, so we need to kind of make it like its own separate layer. So you trace it like that, okay? And then you pull this hair back and remove the border, save it. Um, and yeah, there it is. Let's put this all the way behind the face layer, all the way in the back. So it looks like that. See how it's behind the face layer? It wouldn't have worked if you made it on top of it. Um, as I said, try to think of the stacking piece of paper on top of each other. If you think of it that way, it's going to help you tremendously to make this really, really fast. Um, and then again, disabling those. I'm going to make the neck, and I think we're done. Basically, I'm working really, really fast, so if you have any questions, please let me know in the description. I don't want to take too much time because I know the tutorials are really annoying and I'm trying to do my best um, to show you my work process. But that's basically the principle, just trace things, stack them on top of each other, and that's it. Um, if you have any questions, please, please, please let me know and let me finish working on the neck and I can wrap up for today. Um, it's called this neck layer. So I remove the border, disable it here, which is like a mid tone color. Put this all the way in the back, but in front of the hair in the back. Does that make sense? See? Stacks up really nicely. Fix the face here. What is this? Fix the face. There it is. And that's how it looks from a distance. And you can really see it starts to look like a cartoon. And the more shadows and highlights you put, and the more stylized you make this, the more of a cartoon it's going to look. So for example, if I go back to the neck layer here, you can see there's a bunch of shadows here. I can definitely make this into 
another sh shadow layer on top of the neck base layer. I should probably call this neck base layer. Um, so here again, just to summarize basically the idea is you make a base layer of every shape and then you start building shadows and highlights on top of it. Yes, yes. Now, after you're done, so I'm going to remove this picture right now. And this is the actual final, final cartoon. And after you are done, what you're going to do is go here and you select this rectangle and you make this big rectangle. Okay. You put this rectangle all the way in the back, all the way, all the way. And for the background, make this green, as green as you can. It kind of looks like green. And there you go, your green screen is done. What you gotta do is follow my other tutorial. The link should pop up in any moment now. And if you follow that tutorial, you already have your cartoon done. You just have to follow the tutorial on how to make the rest of the intro. Or if you only wanted the cartoon, your cartoon is done. Yay! Um, to export this, basically just go here, export, and click download. It's gonna save it in this F S V G format. And that is actually the format for vectors. If you choose to do so, or if your program does not import SVG files, you can go to SVG2, PNG, or whatever, JPEG, and let's just PNG. And basically convert this to any like normal format. <laughs> I lost my thoughts for a moment there. SVG is basically just a vector file it just keeps the properties of a vector as much as possible makes it really crisp crisp but not all editing programs accept this format so basically if you go to this website or any website really select your files and where's my file have many things yeah here it is untitled svg and then i make it into a png and how do i do this um I guess, I don't know, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, here is dark conversion for the for blind people like me. Finished, and you click download. And now you have your PNG picture. And now you can definitely just import it from anywhere that you can use a green screen. And look, it literally does look like a cartoon. It takes so much less time than Adobe Draw. And again, I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. I really, really, really put a lot of effort into this. So, bye.